Now today I have something a little bit different for you, as you could tell by the title. Usually, as you know, I like to post a process video every Friday, but this week got super busy. I was gone all of last week. At that time I scheduled your Friday video and while you were watching I was enjoying the beautiful Colorado mountains. We took a camping trip and it was great to sit under the cool pines and get away from the heat here in the city. Anyway, when I returned there were of course things I had to catch up on. It just got too busy and I couldn't find the time to finish a project, do all the editing and have it ready for today's video. But at the same time, I didn't want to leave you without anything. I think a few weeks ago I skipped the Friday video and I just don't want it to become a bad habit. So I'm thinking of making a very short and quick chat video where I can share a few uh, art ideas and tips, uh, little things I started using recently which I found helpful and I hope it will be helpful to you too. Then towards the end of the video I have a short show and tell about a project I had to do a repair on and it's something I made very recently and many of you will remember. Now the first point is chalk paint. Now recently chalk paint have become quite popular. Many people use it to do restorations, renovations, especially of furnishings. It has a nice matte finish. It gives you that vintage look. It's easy to distress and so on. But generally speaking, chalk paint is way more expensive than regular paint. But there's a way to make it yourself. I did a little research and it looks like the best thing to use is calcium carbonate. It's a powder you can mix with your uh, acrylic paint and it could be your metallics, it could be your uh, gloss enamel, it could be your multi-surface type, your neon, whatever you have. If you add this powder you can turn it into chalk paint. Now there are a few different uh, recipes out there um, but it seems like this works the best and is the safest. Calcium carbonate is the stuff that put into tums, those little things you chew when you have a, a upset stomach so it's completely safe to use. I bought a small bag on Amazon, it's inexpensive but because it just came in a bag I put it in this coffee jar. So let me show you real quick uh, how I mix it. Or before I go to that, let me show you what the finish looks like with chalk paint. Maybe you're not uh, familiar with it. I did these recently and they were both made with the same type of materials, my metallic acrylics. Here I used them just the way they came out of the box and here or out of the tube and here I added the calcium carbonate and you can see it gives a chalky look, that kind of old worn vintage look and I really like it and I definitely want to use it more. So here I did just a little example of one of my metallic paints, uh, the copper here. So let me show you how I mix it. Now from what I understand the ratio should be one fourth of the powder to three fourths of paint. Now I usually just mix up a little bit, just what I need for my uh, project. So I have this tiny little measuring uh, spoon here and yeah, I kind of wing it a little bit. I'm not so precise with uh, the ratio. Maybe if I would paint a wall, I'll be a little more careful. So you just uh, add it to your paint. That's all there is to it. You can add water to it too to get the uh, right consistency. Now I usually use this uh, for dry brushing so I don't need it very liquid. So mix it well and I'm going to paint it here. Now right now you won't see the difference uh, so much because my paint is still wet. But I will let it dry and show it to you again in just a few minutes. But I think already you can see that some of the shine is uh, gone. So we'll get back to this. Um, but if you want to try making your own chalk paint, it's super simple. Of course you can mix up a bigger batch if you do renovate furnishings or something like that. And that's completely up to you. Okay, and that brings me to a little tip. Nothing super fancy or uh, unusual. But I don't know about you, but lately I've been getting a lot let me see, a lot of these uh, Amazon envelopes. 
So I was thinking uh, they make a really nice little pad for mixing paint like I did here. So I cut them apart in different sizes and I find that it saves me time uh, because it's much easier to just throw this away uh, than to start cleaning up my uh, mat here, my craft mat. Also, it really saves on baby wipes. I use baby wipes a lot for cleaning things and through a package like I had triplets. So this saves me uh, spending money on baby wipes and saves also paper plates which I used to use. Now I still mix on my craft mat but usually things that are not so messy and are easy to clean up. Especially I avoid working with black gesso on my craft mat because it's really a pain to clean up. I usually put some under it like an old magazine or something. So anyway that's that. Let's see what else we have here. Hmm. Oh, the next thing is all about glue. Now, like so many of you, I keep my glue upside down in a little basket. But the thing I really want to talk about is the tops of the glue. I don't know about you, but when I work uh, so many times, I'm done, I'm looking for the top and I cannot find it. It rolled somewhere, it's hiding somewhere on my table, maybe it fell off. And so often I have to stop what I'm doing, looking and searching for the top, which I find a bit frustrating. So rather than only have that one top available, I started keeping the old tops. So when I'm done with a bottle like this or two, I just put the tops in here. That way I have one handy. And usually later on when I clean up, these tops always reappear. Another thing about glue, I found this little key here. It's called a tube key squeeze. You can also find it on Amazon. And uh, like you can tell, you put it here on the bottom of your um, tube. It does come out like this. And I had it on this one. And I actually can still put it back there because there's still more to squeeze out of this tube. And I think it comes really handy. It's worth a few bucks it costs and it saves money on the glue in the long run because you can use it all the way through. So that's that. Another thing is art stones. I've always been tempted to buy some because I like the way they look. They come in different sizes. They're not cheap and they're just little artificial light stones you can add to your assemblages or your mixed media projects. Um, but I've, I started using these little styrofoam uh, bowls as an alternative. You can buy these at the dollar store. You get about three times the amount you see here for a dollar. Yes, they kind of jump everywhere, but if you use plenty of glue, they work really well. And after you cover them with gesso and paint, they harden quite a bit. Not completely, um, but to me they look great. Uh, you can see here on this project, I used them right here and over here. And I think it's uh, just another alternative uh, to buying uh, commercially made uh, art stones. So they are little styrofoam things. Another thing I started to include in my projects, especially when I use gears and uh, chains, a lot of metal, uh, are these push buttons. They are easily available. You can buy them cheaply. They come in all kinds of sizes, as you know. And maybe you have somebody who is a seamstress and has too many of these, uh, because I don't think they're all that widely used anymore on clothes. So I like to add them to my metal arrangements. I think they give the illusion of rivets or some other handyman type closure. And yeah, it's uh, easy to add those to your metal components if you make assemblages or mixed media uh, projects. So let's see in my little list. Oh, one more thing. I bought this little bag of um, disposable eyeliner brushes. These are a little hard. There might be some better ones out there. But basically they make very fine lines when you need fine lines, uh, but you don't want to mess up your good art brushes. I use these to get into little corners in my assemblage pieces. I use them for little outlines, even for writing something. And you get like a hundred or more in a little package. They're very inexpensive. So this works for me, maybe works for you. I think that's all on the tips. There are a few other things, but I think I will cover those in some of my upcoming uh, videos. So let me show you the little show and tell just a second here. 
Now, just a few weeks ago, I put together and decorated two new art journals for myself. This being the smaller one of the two, it came out really well. I'm happy with the design and I like how sturdy it is. At the time, I happened to have an old book cover which was the perfect size for this and it gave it the strength it needs because these type of journals do not have a spine. They have loose leaves and these jump rings. There will be a link below in my description box to the video uh, where I made those two covers in case you haven't seen it before. Either way, it's really important to have sturdy covers for these type of journals. Now the second journal was quite a bit bigger. It was a 12 by 12 and at the time I did not have a book cover available that would fit. So I used just one of the chipboard pages and even though I tried to strengthen it by adding tapestry and some decoupage paper, it really Really it didn't work. When it was standing in my shelf it just would bend more and more each day. So I knew that I had to find something else. And luckily one of my dear friends came over and brought some old book covers because she knows that I use them in my art. And one of the covers was rather large as you can see here. Now it's not 12 by 12, it's 12 by 11, uh, but that's big enough. So I gave my pages a little trim and I made a new cover. Now I could have just added my old cover on top, but to be honest I wasn't absolutely thrilled about the feel of this and the look and the way it didn't complement my focal point here. I really like this little design and I wanted to keep using it, but I thought it would look even better on a different cover. So I started from scratch and I will surely use this on something, uh, but let me tell you real quick uh, what I did here to make this cover. First of all I did some stenciling with this little stencil here to get very irregular little dots all over the place. Uh, then I added some crumbled up tissue paper over it. When it was dry I added the lace on this side, then covered everything in black gesso. Then I used my brayer and my metallic paints and just went up and down like this, just hitting the highlights, just the textured parts. And I really liked the way it came out. I used some uh, purple, I used some teal, I used some off-white, I used some gold and I think this looks a little bit like branches and I think it did a good job on the lace as well. I like to use this type of lace, it's a little heavier than the very delicate type uh, but it has a nice design, just these swirls and no roses. Don't get me wrong, I really like roses but it seems that the rose design for lace is pretty much all the same and I'm not very fond of it. So I prefer a different type of lace. As you can see I did the same on the back and again I have the great texture, I like the subtle colors so I'm happy with the way it looks now and I think my focal point uh, fits so much better on here. Uh, in the inside here I can show you I added some um, fabric, yes, here and also in the back. It's actually the same fabric I used to make cute little curtain for my small RV we use when we go camping. Now here in the very back another little art idea. I uh, added a piece from a painting. I had this mixed media painting for a long time and this corner was okay but the rest of it was a bit boring. So rather than it uh, keep standing in the corner of my room <laughs> um, collecting dust, I decided to just cut the nice part and put it here in my journal. This is actually pretty dimensional. This was all cut out by hand. It has some uh, crumbled up tissue paper in here. It has some paper decoupage. So this part is all right. So I'm happy it can live in here. Oops, my jump ring opened and that happens sometimes. Should it, but there we go. All right. So this is my new improved journal. Sometimes you just have to make repairs if the things you made doesn't work or it just doesn't look right to you. Before I go I want to show you this little sample we worked on. Now it's dry and you can see how uh, the chalk paint is very matte. 
It's also very opaque and yes, the color lightens just a little bit. So here it is. So I believe that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed my few little tips and ideas. I know it wasn't anything spectacular, uh, but I'm glad I was able to finish this video on time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come and see me soon again. I do have some bigger projects in the work and they will be up on my channel really soon. Please have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay creative. I see you soon and bye bye for now. Mm -hmm.